Don't let its looks fool you. This boring looking Acer laptop actually packs a little bit of a punch. And in this video, we're going to make it a little bit better. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out this Acer A515-51. That's an awful lot of 5s and 1s, but uh, I think that's what we got here. And we're going to be checking it out, and we're going to do some upgrades to it. So it starts off with pretty decent specs. It's not new by any means. This is old. This is this falls into the cheap category of laptops that you may be able to find secondhand on Marketplace or Craigslist. Um, but sometimes you just need something that's going to get a job done for you. And this one should certainly fit most bills. Now it's not a gaming laptop, but it will be able to play some games. And we'll check that out a little bit later in the video. But to start off, we've got an 8th gen i5 processor. I believe it's an 8250U. Not bad. I think it's four cores and eight threads. It's got eight gigs of memory. We're going to be upgrading that. It's got a small SSD drive in there. We're going to be upgrading that also. And it's got a 15 inch 1080p screen. So again, not top of the line, but you should be able to find these things fairly inexpensive. And with a couple little upgrades that we're going to do today, you can make it even better. So let's check out what I've got to upgrade this. Now this has 8 gigs of RAM in it, but unfortunately 4 gigs is built into the computer itself, and then 4 gigs is a chip that you can actually remove. So we're going to take that second chip out, and we're going to replace it with a 16 gig chip. This is DDR4, 2400 megahertz. Now what that's going to do is it's going to give us essentially 20 gigs of RAM, which sounds like a lot but it's going to give us basically 8 gigs of dual channel. So you're going to have the 4 that's built in there, and then it's going to address another 4 from this chip in dual channel mode, and then the additional, I guess, 12 on here is just going to be in single channel mode. But it's going to be a lot better than it was before, so that's fine. I don't like when a laptop does that and has 4 gigs built in for a couple different reasons. One, it's just sloppy, cheap way of doing it. Let people put a pair of RAM in there that they want to put in there. That way you know for sure you have a matching pair. I did my best to match up the specs of this RAM to what's believed to be soldered into the board itself. So hopefully everything works good with that. And then in addition to the RAM, we're going to throw a 500 gig SSD in there instead of the built-in 240 or whatever it is, just to give a little bit more room for installing programs and such. So let's go ahead and get started on these upgrades and then we'll boot everything up and see what it looks like when it's done. So you always want to make sure you shut this thing all the way down. Don't just close it and put it to sleep. Do a full shutdown. That way nothing's running. Nothing's going to wake up while you're working on it. So we're going to remove this bottom plate. But before we do that, I'm going to actually take a look at these two little access holes here. Sometimes you're lucky and you get, uh, you get to do all your upgrades without taking the whole thing apart. But let's go ahead and take these off, starting with this bigger panel here. And to do this, I'm using my trusty Stribido uh, toolkit. Well, this is a Phillips Zero drive bit, and I've got my handy dandy magnetic mat here to hold all the screws as I take them off. So check this guy out on Amazon. It's cheap. It's got every bit that you would need. I'm not sponsored by them, but I use it for every single video, and I love it to death. So go check that out. So we went ahead and took this screw out here, and then it's just held in with a bunch of clips. So you just grab this corner here that's that's exposed and you try to pop the first clip and then you just work your way around. Now this is a little bay here for a two and a half inch hard drive, which would be super awesome if I could just add another, let's say, terabyte in there real cheap and easy. But I think they cheaped out on this one and it looks like there's no SATA drive uh, cable coming out here. So I've seen ones like this before that had the SATA cable. This must have been a model that was a tiny bit cheaper, so it excluded that cable. I think you can buy them on Amazon or eBay, and it plugs into the board. It pops out here, and then you can put in a 2.5. But I'm not too worried about that, because like I said, we're going to be using an NVMe drive anyways. So let's go ahead and keep on taking this thing apart. Let's open up this door over here. And same thing, we're just going to pop that lid open. And this is where we see our RAM. So here's the one RAM chip that we can take out. Um, and again, like I said, there's four gigs that's basically built onto the motherboard that you can't replace. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that in there until we get this thing all the way taken apart. So next thing I'm going to do is going to take all these screws out here, and then we'll pry this lid off. 
All right, that was a lot of screws. Luckily, uh, they all look the same size, so that makes it easy when you go back in. You don't have to worry about which one goes in which one, but there's a lot of screws there. I almost had to take a little meal break in between doing those. So now that we got all the screws out of here, I'm going to grab like one of these corners, either this one or this one, has a good little grabbing spot, and we're just going to try to pop the clips, and then we're just going to slowly work our way around the rest of the laptop. And take that cover right off. Now that we got the cover off, we can see, yes, there is no cable right here. So it wasn't like tucked away, missing. It's just not actually there. So um, that's a bummer. But like I said, we're not too worried about it because we've got a full-size NVMe drive over here that we're going to be able to replace. And that makes it super easy. So anytime you're working inside a laptop like this, if you're going to be changing parts out, it's always a good idea to disconnect the battery just to make sure you don't short anything out. So it looks like we got just an easy connector right here. I'm gonna take this non-conductive little pokey thing that came in that Strabido kit, and I'm just gonna kind of grab an ear here, and then over on this side, and you just kind of work back and forth, kind of pushing it backwards away from that connector. Then once you get that out, you can kind of bend that back a little bit so it doesn't touch anything and now we're good to go so like I said the easy thing is going to be changing out this RAM here so I'm going to be replacing that with this 16 gig PC 24 uh, chip single chip I'll put a link to that down in the description below it looks like we got a little plastic you know protector thing here so we're just going to grab these two little clip ears here pull them apart and that's going to make this spring up then we're just going to wiggle that out of the channel and then just match the notch with the notch here. Lift up that plastic again. And we're going to put that in at about a 20 degree, 30 degree angle or so. And I'm going to use both thumbs to kind of push it in, wiggle it in, make sure it's fully seated. And then we just push it down. So like I said, very easy. If you ever upgraded any kind of uh, SODIMM RAM in a laptop, it's exactly the same. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this little set screw right here, right out of the NVMe drive. And we don't want to lose that because we're going to use that to secure the new one. So once you take that screw out, it's going to lift up a little bit and we're just going to grab it and wiggle it back and forth a tiny bit and it's going to pop right out. All right, and we're going to be replacing this with a Western Digital Blue. Uh, this is 500 gigabytes and you can use pretty much any NVMe brand that you want. I'll put a couple links down in the description below of some brands that I usually grab from Amazon because they're uh, pretty cheap when they're on sale. So again, you just want to put it back into the channel matching that notch up. I usually give it a little bit of a wiggle just to make sure, sure it's fully seated. And then you'll know again, once you push it down, you'll see that this little half moon shaped thing kind of fits perfectly in there. So this is another reason why you want to have this magnetic tip like this because these can be kind of a, a pain if you aren't able to hold the screw upside down like this and screw it back in without the worries of the screw falling off and getting lost somewhere. So now we got the hardware all done. Replace the RAM, replace the SSD. Now remember all of your windows and files and everything is on here so if you had anything that you needed to save uh, beforehand then that would be a good idea. If you want to grab anything after you do the upgrade, you can do that also by grabbing an NVMe enclosure like this. These are super easy. It's just a USB drive, basically. You open it up, pop one of these, uh, pop your old drive in there, connect it up once you get Windows running, and copy over any files you want. You can also clone this straight onto there. I usually, anytime I upgrade something like this, I just do a full brand new Windows installation on there and uh, be done with it then just copy over any kind of files and programs that I need afterwards. So I'm going to grab a thumb drive that has a Windows installation on there so we can start installing Windows. I'm going to plug this battery back in. I'm going to put the back cover back on but not put the 500 different screws on it yet. I want to go ahead and get Windows running first and then once I know everything is running properly and I didn't mess anything up inside then I can go ahead and put all those screws back in. So I'll meet you back here in a minute once I get Windows booted up.
All right, so I got a thumb drive here that I created a Windows 10 uh, boot media with, and I just used the Microsoft Windows media creation tool. You can get it right off their website and uh, create a, a thumb drive. Super easy. I plugged it in, I turned on the laptop, and it came right up to this. Now, that's because there's nothing on the drive that we just put in there, and it recognized, hey, the only bootable media that we had was this. Uh, it may be different if you're using a drive that's already got Windows on it, or you're, depending on the BIOS of your laptop, if uh, you need might need to go into BIOS and tell it to boot directly from the USB drive. So I was lucky, but a couple more steps, you would be uh, able to do the same thing. So I'm going to step through these uh, installation screens here, and I'll meet you back once Windows is all up and running. All right, so I got Windows all installed and all updated, and let's go ahead and take a look at our specs now to make sure everything came over. So it is the i5-8250U CPU, again, four cores, eight threads. Not a big clock speed, but that's because it's a laptop CPU, but uh, it, it'll still get some work done. And there's our 20 gigs of RAM. So it is showing the two slots used here, but remember that is four gigs internal and then 16 gigs that we added. So we do get the benefit of dual channel on part of that memory, but not all of it, but it's still a lot of memory. And here's our SSD. Now you may have noticed when we were installing the SSD that the old one looks a little bit different than the new one. And that's because the one that was in there is actually a SATA serial ATA SSD. Now those are still plenty fast, faster than the spinning drives that we used to have in laptops, but the NVMe is actually a little bit better. So it's nice that that port that was in there is both capable of SATA and NVMe. So they're both M.2 connectors, but uh, generally speaking right now, the NVMe's are a little bit cheaper and a little bit faster. So go with one of those if it works in there. And then here we can see the two GPUs, the internal Intel UHD 620, that's what's built into the CPU itself. And this one does actually have a discrete uh, NVIDIA GeForce MX150, which is a two gigabyte GPU. Again, we're not gonna be playing, you know, 4K AAA video games, but this will definitely help with any kind of graphics processing. Maybe you're doing some photo editing or video editing, and uh, even a little bit of light gaming. So overall, we started off with what I'm considering a, a fairly cheap laptop. I got this for, uh, a bargain pretty much added a couple dollars worth of upgrades in it and this thing's gonna work uh, great so let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions about this what I consider to be pretty easy upgrade for this laptop let me know if you've done one of these yourself and upgraded it and what you use it for I hope you found this video helpful if you did I appreciate a thumbs up if you want to see more stuff more geeky stuff computer upgrades computer builds all kinds of uh, product reviews then go ahead and check out the rest of the channel and subscribe if you see something you like. But I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.